Welcome to this short presentation. I'd like to give you a glimpse of the future, but I'd also like to show you a path to navigate to that place. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy the presentation. And I'll start by setting the scene slightly for why we think the industrial metaverse is a huge driver for change in our businesses. The first is really all about the marketplace itself, the huge challenging dynamics that we're all facing to run our businesses sustainably and reliably. We've got workforce changes, We've got net zero challenges ahead of us. We've got changing operation regulations under ESG defined rules. Everything is really up in the air to be able to run a business. I can't, I can't think of many more challenges that could be thrown at us over these last two or three years to still run our business as well. But despite all of that, what we need really is industrial teams to be able to work together effectively. And despite having the technologies at our fingertips, all of the smart technologies that you can see on the Schneider Electric booth here and at the Aviva booth, our customers and our cultures in our workplaces are very slow to change. We tend to work in silos, whether that be our departmental silos, our business silos, or even our countrywide silos. We find comfort in working with our own teams. That might be engineering, operations, senior management, wherever that is we get stuck in that world. And that means we use the same applications, we're different databases, different technologies, and it means that it's very difficult for us to be able to actually see the big picture and actually work on things like net zero because we're so busy working in our own domains. Multiply that by 100 or 100,000 times when we think about the ecosystems of our, our customers working in supply chains where you might have a hundred different suppliers from different technology environments, the complexity of being able to actually work effectively across the entire supply chain is just enormous. And technology is here to help us to actually make life slightly easier. But what it really needs is a mindset change. We need to stop thinking about being in one organization and working on our own applications and start working more effectively together. Ultimately, this is about changing the way we work. And that's going to take some time for us to understand the impact of it. It's about connecting data, apps, and probably most important, people. The talent in our organizations, they need to have the same view of the world. They need to think the same and share the same global vision for the business. And how are we supposed to come towards a connected industrial economy when we have all of this silo working, all of this complexity in getting efficiency in the way we communicate and collaborate. It's nearly impossible to work out how that works, but ultimately this is where the industrial metaverse comes in. Because fundamentally, the industrial metaverse is about people. You might think it's about technology, you might think it's about virtual reality, it's not. It's just about people working together. So what I want to do is I want to help you to understand how Aviva and Schneider see the industrial metaverse. But what I've found over the last year while I've been talking about this subject is I need to tell you what it's not. Because it's quicker and easier for me to tell you what it's not than to tell you what it is. It's not about cryptocurrency, okay? I'm not talking about the metaverse, Mark Zuckerberg, okay? I'm talking about an industrial metaverse not interested in Bitcoin, thank you. Uh, also not interested in social media, necessarily, for the running of my operating plant or my manufacturing systems. Sorry, not interesting. It's not about game playing, despite 50% of the world's population being gamers. It's not about playing games, we're here to do work, we're here to make money, we're here to make profitable businesses. And thank the Lord, it's not about non-fungible tokens. It's not about virtual real estate and the buying and selling of a house that's digital, not real. It's, that's all irrelevant to an industrial metaverse context. And to some degree, it's not about virtual reality or augmented reality. There are some great use cases for where the industrial metaverse can use full immersion, but the majority of us won't be wearing a headset for eight hours a day. And what we'll want from our industrial metaverse is to be able to access it from a laptop, from an iPad, from a phone even. So we want to put it into your hands as users without having to go through any hurdles to get there. 
So it's very clear to us what an industrial metaverse is. And in the kind of school style, I'll read it through. It's a persistent virtual environment which allows live collaboration across teams. We don't care what interface you use, so we're agnostic of the interface device, but open to all of the data sources that you need. It's not just a Schneider or an Aviva platform. This is fully open, so you can bring data in from any other system. And it's about role-based access. This is enterprise-level authorization for access to data. And it's about real-time operating information like MES systems, SCADA systems, so those sub-millisecond data streams that are coming in. You need to gain access to that in the industrial metaverse. And finally, it's about all the engineering data that supports all of that. All of those drawings, all of those documents, all of those PDFs, 3D models that make up what this is. This is a persistent place where you can change things and they reflect your real world. It's about people working together in live multiplayer or multi-person, if you want me to sound more corporate, environments where we're all together in the same space. We want you to use whatever tool you have in your hand. We don't need you to use a VR headset. And we recognize that you need data from everywhere because that's how you run your businesses now. So why wouldn't you want that in a metaverse? And our SCADA, MES, and engineering informations should be at the tip of your finger when you're in the industrial metaverse. So ultimately, it's about people. Because the reality is, is that our organization's most important and powerful resource is the people that we employ. The tech's great, the tech helps us to do our jobs, and obviously we're here to talk about tech, but it's really about our people and how they work together. It's about how they collaborate effectively. I know for sure that when I finish my career, the best moments I'll have had will be when I've been working in a team. It's almost certainly not, despite us all being amazing individuals, it's when we work as a team that we actually double up what we're capable of. We go beyond what we think we're capable of because good leaders, good managers form great teams. Tools need to catch up. Our collaboration tools need to get to the place where they really support that high level of collaboration. Okay, so if there's three things to take away from this first set of slideware, and yes, I am gonna show you a demo. Um, it's about multiple people being together in the same environment. Consider your last Zoom or Teams meeting. You share a screen, you look at each other's slides, you see each other's faces, you hear each other's voices. It's a very, very powerful collaboration tool. But what if you were in a 3D model together, still seeing each other's faces, still hearing each other's voices, but being able to independently, in the meeting, move around your workshop floor, checking for MES data, checking on issues, and still discussing it in a virtual meeting room, interacting with objects and people. This data we talk about is the digital twin. It's the culmination of our digitalization strategy in our businesses, and it's a long road. Let's not deny a digital twin isn't something that you install, click next, 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 and finish. This is something that takes commitment and investment on your part this is the long yards to get to. But when you've made these long yards and you've created a trusted central source of data for your business, the world's your oyster for all kinds of new collaborations. And this one is really overlooked in my view, and it's about interfaces. How we as humans interact with computers. Our 40, 50 years of expertise in being able to create interfaces that you find easy Apple have proven themselves to be masters at this over the years. But what now, when we're actually avatars, as well as in a meeting, that's going to create a lot of new stresses on how we present that to you in a nice and fair way. And it has to be so simple. Not so simple that my son or daughter can do it, because let's be honest, they can do it anyway. It's more that my grandparents can do this. That's the level of simplicity. And might I dare to say, a little bit of fun. All right, I'm going to give you a scenario. This is a prototype demonstration of the industrial metaverse in the context of an operating asset. In this case, 
It's an oil and gas asset. That was the data that we had at hand when we built the prototype. Um, but of course, you can use your imagination to put it in the context of a manufacturing site. We're looking at a 2D platform, kind of the normal things that you would see. This is our unified operations center technology stack, which you can see on one of our booths. Um, but you can see when we start running it that it's possible to launch from that platform type 2D view of the world into a 3D world. This collaboration space is where you invite your colleagues to join, like you would do in a Teams meeting. Jump in either ad hoc meetings or on a scheduled meeting into a 3D space using your mouse and your keyboard to navigate around. But why sit in the collaboration room where you can jump into a virtual version of your actual asset? This is a photogrammetry scan of an actual asset in one of our customers' bases. And all of the data is highlightable and linkable. So imagine all of your machines, all of your control systems being connectable by the point of a mouse or the click of your hand if you're wearing a virtual reality headset, pulling down streams of data from your MES systems or your SCADA systems, being able to ask when this machine was last maintained, uh, what's the current set of certifications or the PDFs for specification for this particular machine. You can open up a full application which acts as a 2D pane inside the 3D space. And you can deep dive into the sensors and start to work together. But remember, this isn't you alone. You have colleagues here. You have all your colleagues being able to move, see the same screens as you're seeing. There's no concept of screen sharing. It's all about really diving into the data natively. OK, one final short movie. Let's see that same story told out from a designer or an engineer's perspective, not an operator. This is someone years before that plant was made who had to do the 3D modeling and design of it. And every single week when they're designing these tools, they run design reviews. So this is a long meeting every week where heads of department come together and they start to plan out whether the project is on time or not. Is the, is the design actually working? Where are the faults? Where are the errors? These are 3D native people. They work in 3D CAD all their lives. And in this kind of collaboration room setting, which is like, a, like an office or a conference room, you can see by accessing the digital twin, you can get all the schematics, all the drawings, and all the information. And you can use it to launch 3D versions of that actual working 3D CAD model as a live model that is constantly being updated by a big engineering team. And they can look at their issues, which tend to often be around design, specifications, regulations, and sometimes clashing, where it's very easy to clash two objects in 3D space. But you know, that would never exist in a real construction site. So maybe we want to go to the site and see this in one-to-one -one as well. We can teleport our entire team with us to go into the CAD model and experience it at one-to-one -one scale, which creates a different part of your brain is triggered, a different set of thought processes. Your spatial awareness kicks in and you start to really understand how to add context. Remember, you're not doing this alone. You have 10 or 15 colleagues of, with you who you can see and hear and debate with. You're acting independently, but you're working together as a team. This is the kind of level up for collaboration to really maximize the value of our talented workforce. And with that, I'll throw it out to questions. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so we've got a lot of interest in the Aviva platform with some of our multi-site microgrid customers. So in your view, who, who are going to be the first movers in this type of space? That's a good one. I, I know for sure because we've been doing a year-long program of customer feedback, so voice of customer programs, interviewing them all the time about what their sentiment is about the industrial metaverse. Customers are extremely positive about this idea of the future. Where we see excellence is when customers have already digitalized their businesses. So if they have a digital twin and they've invested a few years ago in getting that tech in space, they're kind of almost ready for this right now. So it's a kind of a way of drawing our businesses through the investment cycle to actually pull together a digital twin. From my perspective, I've seen more um, hotspots in oil and gas where they maybe have some extra spend and they're trying to transition their energy models. So they see high investment opportunities to help them get to more sustainable businesses. And I've also seen in manufacturing businesses a pull through here because manufacturing businesses are very highly censored. So you have a lot, a lot of data already available to the manufacturing organizations. So I see some real hotspots from those two particular markets. 
I would have a question. How do you manage uh, connectivity in the network on these sites? And how do you manage cybersecurity? Good, great question. Um, so let me tackle the cybersecurity one first. Um, all of this is a layer on top of a infrastructure which is around the digital twin. So since the digital twin in our uh, offering is a cloud-based offer, all of the cybersecurity is handled with our technology partners and ourselves to make sure we have high resilience and low level of penetration for our technologies. This layer on top is really part of that, if you like, architected infrastructure. So from a cybersecurity point of view, if you already have a digital twin, there's no extra uh, exposure, if you like, to risk. And from a, um, a networking perspective, most of the story that we've been telling up today has been about people working at home or people working in the office and virtualizing their workspace. And it's really probably the next step after we've achieved success there where we bring in workers who are on site who want to blend in their augmented data into it. So at the moment, that's a problem that we have to tackle in the future, how to get high levels of resilient um, network connections for on-site workers. But we see that as a challenge, <laughs> definitely. Thank you.